On November 30th, at 1.12 in the morning, Kennedy, my littlest man and biggest boy, has passed away. Last night, while his mother and I both slept on the floor next to Kennedy in his normal spot, his final act was to use all of his strength to roll over to look at us. At the time, I did not know it would be the last, but I gave him a pat on the head, told him I loved him, and proceeded to rest my eyes for a moment. After a minute or two, I awoke to my hand still petting Kennedy, whose eyes were now shut and his body lay there lifeless. It was the end. The little boy, who had enough energy from multiple lifetimes, had closed his eyes for the last time, with his last image being his mother and I asleep next to him in the spot he slept in every night. After 130 months living on this planet, nine of which battling cancer, he had taken his last breath. But with this last breath, you will see that he wanted it to be known that he loved us and he enjoyed the company of every person he came across. He knew it was his time and wanted one last look at us, his parents. Those two young, dumb college kids who selected him from a litter of puppies at the Waco Humane Society when he was only two weeks old so many years ago. I cannot even begin to explain how much pain I am in right now, but this is somehow, if possible, a good pain. Not the debilitating pain where I cannot move or walk, rather, the kind of pain that sets my mind in motion. Remembering all of the amazing times we spent together as I pace around the house. Remembering times that I have forgotten we once lived. How you, Kennedy, loved your older sister since we first brought you home, who definitely did not feel the same way at first. All those times you chased your tail and the few times you caught it. Snuggling up with your mom when you were scared of the thunder. How you hated getting your nails cut unless you could see your mom and I. Living in three different states, which required multiple 24-hour drives filled with french fries and other scrumptious treats. All of us experiencing the snow together. Playing with the only toy you like, that reindeer that you swore was a moose. And your mom and I buying you so many of them that you would have at least one the rest of your life. Where one of these laid under your snout as you passed. All those times you played hockey with me in the garage. <laughs> you were always the best little defender. Helping your mom study through all of medical school and being there for her during her residence. The most amazing of all was how you were a loving big brother to our newest member of the family until the very end. And with any life well lived comes hardship where you unknowingly had to follow us through our journey from being dumb college kids to somewhat mature adults. There were times when your personality made things difficult on us and times where we made your life difficult, but upon reflection, I would not change any of it. There was that time we had to come pick you up from the vet after getting you fixed the minute we got home from dropping you off because you kept throwing up from crying so hard how you hated other dogs and was only interested in meeting new people, how you were more of an indoor dog and did not like hiking like the rest of us. But the most difficult of all fell on the shoulders of your mother and I. Your mom and I had to go through major financial hardships to get to where we are now. Because of this, sometimes I feel like it was unfortunate that you were selected by a couple of kids having to navigate their way into the workforce and that you deserved a better life. There were many times where we could barely afford to eat but we made damn sure that you were fed. Now that we have money to serve you whatever you want at every meal, it absolutely destroyed me to see you not being able to eat on your final day. Even while knowing the circumstances of your disease, I still feel like we failed you in the end. Taking care of you was what got us through the day for so many years that it was devastating to see you without any appetite. I will miss feeding you your dinner and how excited you would get walking to the pantry with me. I will forever miss your smell, how you would come wake me up every morning. Watching TV with me especially shows the dinosaurs that your mom was not particularly fond of. I will miss how you would sit next to me when I would work from home and how you would follow me into the pantry for a snack multiple times a day. I will forever miss the sounds of your footsteps following me everywhere I went in the house. You saw life as an adventure and what an adventure it was to walk alongside you throughout it all. Your mom and I might have messed up a lot of things in our life, 
but you were definitely not one of them. You were the perfect son. I would go through the entire journey again with all the hardships just to spend another lifetime with you. However, your story is not done here. While you wait on the other side to see us again, you will live in our memories, popping up when we need you most. I will continue to whisper your name under my breath when I am anxious, knowing that you will hear me and bring me comfort. So this is not a goodbye. This is that I cannot wait to see you again. You will forever be in our hearts. Thank you for all the years of joy and for battling out the last nine months. No matter what anyone says, you won. You will forever be our biggest boy and littlest man. Hey, what are you doing? Come here. And oh, yeah. Leave him alone. Oh, taking a poop now. Sweet. Okay, bye, Daddy.